Next up, we have a topic that we've brought up a couple of times today, but now we're going to dive into it. How it started, how it's going, the evolving world of creators. So we're going to bring up Kim and her panelists. And I'm proud to say we've all heard of mannels, right? All male panels. Well, today we're going to have a female, OK? So shout out to all the women out there. And let's bring up Kim and the panelists. All right, I'm so excited to be here. Um, so yes, all girl pow power here. Woohoo! <laughs> right? Um, we figured we actually figured it out upstairs when we were talking about um, the panel in general that we are the only all woman panel here, as well as we thought that maybe we might have to do a TikTok video to <laughs> you know we we wanted to outdo Dave Ivano, but. We decided against it. <laughs> um, so I'm great, grateful to be here um, with this wonderful group of ladies here. Um, first and foremost, I'm Kim Rydell. I'm the VP of Customer Growth. I have the awesome job of getting to work with all of our customers. So whether that is an advertiser, a publisher, a creator, or an agency, I get to talk to them all. So it's uh, an awesome job that I have had for a couple years here at Impact, and it's been very, very fulfilling. So um, I want to introduce everybody, and then we'll, we'll sort of get to a few panelist questions. So first is Tanika. Um, Tanika is a creator and a brand consultant. Um, she actually has her own website and her own business that's called Teach One, Teach Many. And hopefully she'll talk a little bit about that. It's actually a very interesting way um, to pay it forward. Um, next, we have Kaya, and um, Kaya is a creator economy reporter for The Information, which is a tech media outlet. So we're going to hear a very interesting perspective from her where she gets to see across all different types of not only creators, but companies um, and startups, and she'll talk a little bit about that hopefully today as well. Um, and then last on, on at the far end over here is Tori. Um, and Tori is the affiliate director um, for Jane.com. And for those who are not aware of Jane.com, you should all go on there. Um, by the way, it's an online boutique marketplace, so you can find all kinds of things, whether that's um, fashion or beauty um, or home decor, et cetera. So um, great panelists. So let's get started. So first. Um, why don't we start with you, Tanika? Um, tell us how you sort of got into this crazy, fun world of partnerships and influencers and creators. So I was working for a magazine, and go. Okay. So I was working for a magazine, and I was doing adverts. And basically, it was a small magazine, and we were hustling. And I learned how to do decks and pitch to different tourism boards to get our trip sponsored. So I went through a horrible breakout and a breakup, sorry, a horrible breakup and I decided to go to Southeast Asia and basically get lost to find myself. And I documented the whole journey, the good, the bad, the ugly, and um, I started to create a following and I was very, very transparent, and a lot of girls could relate to what I was going through. Brands reached out, and they wanted to collaborate and work with me. So I used my media experience, and I started pitching, counter-pitching. Like, hey, yeah, she want to give me a free hotel, but can we do this? And then I started to realize, OK, you can really make a business from this. And I wanted to teach other influencers on how to do the same. So that's when I started to create Teach One, Teach Many. So it's kind of like an eat, pray, love tour? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right, Kaya? Uh, so I've been a tech reporter for five years. And probably four of that, I have been tangentially covering creators. And in the last year, um, I came onto the information to launch a newsletter focused on the creator economy. And it's really the business side of creators. So. Mm -hmm talking to creators individually, how they're building businesses, startups that are catering, catering to creators and covering what social media platforms are doing to fight for digital talent. Awesome. And Tori? Great. Um, so I've been in the affiliate space for the last 15 years, um, either supporting or really building out brand um, partnership programs on the brand side. And during this time, I found that I really loved um, 
you know, proving the value of affiliate and influencer marketing programs and going um, and um, securing those budgets to do additional tests and learning about new partnerships and really working with the partners to create some great programs. Great, great. Um, so now you know all the panelists here. So we're gonna start on a few different questions. Um, so the first one is really what is, makes the most successful partnership, whether you're you know, a creator or whether you're an advertiser. Um, so, and then obviously, Kaya, from your perspective, you have a, you have a sort of an overarching perspective, so we'll be interested to hear that. Um, why don't we start with Kaya and okay. then we'll, we'll go to the advertiser and then creator side. I think TikTok has really shaken things up because we've all kind of seen the stale product placement type Instagram ads of a creator suddenly, you know, posting a picture with toothpaste and it just feels kind of very stale. Um, and I think what TikTok has done is um, a lot of creators have gotten really creative with sponsored posts. So they might be a comedy type creator and they'll really integrate the brand into kind of one of their organic videos where you watch it and halfway through you don't even realize that it's an ad. Um, and I think over the years, in general, creators and brands have gotten better about kind of exerting less control. So letting the creator just be the creator, I think that really shows through when it just feels like this kind of marketing text and it's not a creator's voice. So I've seen that um, over the years really change where creators are really making partnerships their own and it doesn't feel like this very scripted ad. Um, Tori, you want to go? Sure. Um, so from the brand side, it, we've talked about this, I think, on a couple of the other panels, but just the importance of it being a win-win for both parties. Um, one thing that has been very successful is really sharing those internal insights with our partners. Um, you know, everyone runs these weekly reports, but having an action, so reaching out to the partners and letting them know, you know, we saw that on this day, this product absolutely killed it. Um, and really knowing that the creators know their audience the best and helping them, you know, have insights on, oh, this product's working well, well, that seller's launching another similar product um, on these days and giving them those um, insights so they can act on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead. So um, the way that I go about partnerships is a little different than traditional when you're working with a creator. Um, I see my social media family as, well, I see my social media followers as family. We're a community. And so what I do is I make sure that I'm sending out a newsletter, keeping them updated with what's going on. I am, um, you know, we have a network of it's about 300 girls and two guys, and we support each other's content. We push, we support. If there is a partnership, we are making sure that we are pushing each other's content. Um, we want to ensure that this content goes viral. And how does something go viral? It goes viral when a lot of people are posting about it. So if we have a network of over 300 people and they're posting it and they have their network and then they're reposting it. So really community, uh, when the brand allows me to do what I want to do, then the content is really going to do numbers and it's also going to convert. I can use my authentic voice. I have creative control. I know what my audience wants to see. I'm going to make sure, because creators, we want we want to make sure that brands, you're getting your awareness out, you're, you're getting yourselves, we are converting, and we know our audience. So I, I don't like when um, I'm working with a brand and they want me to use particular verbiage. My audience knows that that's not how I speak. Yeah. And it starts to feel like an ad, and they just scroll right past it. And then as we know, when the engagement is low, then the social media network doesn't even push it out to everyone. So now it's not converting. So basically when we are allowed to do what we want to do and also share it with our community and making sure that our community is also sharing it, that's a great partnership. Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, talking to, the, to um, both, both Tori and uh, Tanika, 
one of the things that we found, or I found in, in the conversations was, you know, Tori was talking about how she has to deliver data internally to her team to talk about how successful these creators are. And that was something that Tanika brought up. She's like, well, I can't be successful unless you, the brand, give me that data. And so I think that is another thing that sort of makes that successful partnership that um, I think the two of you coming together was like, for me was like, oh, that makes so much sense, but we sometimes only see it from one, one end or the other. So, um, and then I just wanna call out, Tanika is a partnership on partnership, if you didn't catch that. So she has, she is a creator, but then she also has her network of girls that she, <laughs> and two guys, um, and she actually fosters that too. So, um, you know, it's all kinds of partnerships that are going on up here. Um, okay, so um, next question is, um, what are some of the most innovative partnerships you guys have worked on, and like that you've either worked on or you've seen that you think are really cool? I think uh, a base, like kind of a basic example, but I think it works really well when a creator genuinely likes this product and has been posting about it for a while, and then they partner together. And oftentimes fans are like so excited to see that because they're like, I know you fly Delta all the time. Like this is great that they're paying you. But um, <laughs> I think a good um, example is Charlie D'Amelio and Dunkin' Donuts. So if you've uh, followed her at all, you know that she's a big coffee lover and she genuinely drinks Dunkin' Donuts. So they um, did a limited time cold brew um, that she actually drinks and named it the Charlie. And the next day they saw 57% um, increase in app downloads and 45% increase in cold brew sales. Um, and you know, obviously she pushed it out. She has a, a ginormous fan base. Um, so that's one I think that has worked really well. Um, I think on the flip side too, you have brands like Duolingo who they're doing some influencer partnerships, but they have really kind of taken on their own brand persona where their mascot is kind of their creator <laughs> in house. And I think what's been really um, successful with their account on TikTok, if you've ever seen it, is they're not trying to sell you on anything. Like it's just funny and entertaining. Um, and they're approaching it more as like reminding you to do your lesson or, you know, and they've become, I think, really synonymous with a brand that has just been absolutely killing it on TikTok. So that's another approach too, where it doesn't have to necessarily be about selling and converting people. It can just be about brand awareness and just kind of having a good brand persona on social media. Tori, you wanna go up next? Sure. Um, so one thing that um, we've seen a lot of success with recently is we've been working really closely with our merch team and creating these absolutely beautiful like holiday gift boxes or spring gift boxes. And initially it was just really to kind of surprise and delight some of our um, influencers and partners. Um, but it's really kind of grown into, you know, um, recruiting new partners in different categories. So we did one for wedding to work with different um, bridal and wedding influencers and introduce them to the Jane products. Um, and this has been a great way just to like get the products in their hands so they can see it. And then if they, you know, like it and love it and share it. Cool. So like Tori, we, I've also been doing um, gift boxes so what I do is I take these gift boxes of some of my favorite products, and these are products that I authentically love, and I send them out to my girls, and this might be you know, getting ready for spring or getting ready for summer, and I send, or even, it might not necessarily be my girls, it can be um, agencies that I work with, girls at the agencies, or brands, I wanna send it out in-house, and sending out my favorite products, and sending out a card, basically saying what the products are, saying why I love each. And when people open, they do these unboxing videos. They're putting it in their stories, they're tagging the products, they're tagging me, I'm reposting, and it creates a little buzz, and everyone's talking about it, and it's authentic. They're great products that I love. I'm gonna make sure when everyone's posting it, I'm stating, this was my favorite lip gloss, or this was my favorite lotion or moisturizer. And it really, really, like, people are clicking the links. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I think it's interesting that both of you talk about um, this unboxing and, and just the different perspectives of trying to use gifting as a way, you know, and you're using it in two different ways, right? Um, Tori's using it to get creators or partners to, to promote her brand, whereas you're actually using it to get more people to 
to support them, right? Yeah. To support them to get them into this into this space. So, um, you know, again, trying to figure out how their partnerships doesn't necessarily have to be creator plus a particular brand. It can be across all different areas. Um, and I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about more about how you've been sort of accelerating posts and making sure that um, you're your network of, of girls, as you always refer to them. I know some people <laughs> don't like that term, but um, uh, you know, your network of girls that you're getting them to um, you know, think things to go viral just by um, helping them. Um, so those partnerships. Basically, when you think of viral, you know, um, it's to me in my head, it's a, it's a numbers game. I don't I don't like the algorithm. I'm more about quality over quantity. Um, I'm anti, I'm not playing to the algorithm. So when I'm posting, I, I'm posting quality content, but I'm also making sure that my network ensures that it has a high engagement. So, you know, let's say if I just came back from Turkey and, um, you know, I'll either have my girls post content from Turkey or and when I say girls, I, I, it's G-U-R-L-S, my girls. <laughs> so I'll have, them, I'll, I'll have them post content from Turkey. I'm posting my content from Turkey. Then the brand is also posting. So now it ensures that that content is showing up on a popular page. We are all described, we're tagging the brand, or, um, we're directing content to the brand's page so that ensures that all traffic is going to the brand. It's you, and it becomes viral. The brand becomes viral. Very cool. Very cool. I just thought it was very interesting to talk about that because I think a lot of times here it goes viral and they don't really understand that. And so it's, um, a, it's a numbers game. It's, yeah. it's very easy. Um, and it's like I don't want to play to the algorithm because then the content becomes watered down. Now I'm creating reels when I don't want to create reels. Sometimes, you know, you can't capture the content or sometimes the brand doesn't want a reel. The brand wants a carousel. And so if my network is helping to push it, I don't have to play, pay for it. I don't have to play to the reel. Now it's just my network is helping to push the content. Oh. Um. All right, so we talked about really cool things, that all the great things, but um, obviously there's challenges in this uh, business. Um, so what? We'll start with Tori, and then we'll we'll go to Tanika. Um, so first, what it, what are the challenges like working with creators? Um, and then and then Tanika will go to you about you know what are the challenges, you know full disclosure of working with some brands. <laughs> So on the brand side, one of the biggest challenges for us is really just internal expectations with return on ad spend. Um, so for us, one of the things that I found is successful is um, doing a campaign where I'm balancing, you know, in, like awareness and actual conversions, like with many influencers instead of just on a one-to-one -one basis. Um, so it's like a summer campaign and you have a big group so then you can measure the return on ad spend and that helps to have kind of a many to one scenario and kind of offset some of those troubles. Um, for me is brands wanting influencers, well creators, I hate the word influencers, <laughs> wanting creators to do stuff for free. Um, it's disrespectful, we put a lot of work into our content you know, and then I pay a team. So if, if I know a brand wants a certain aesthetic, I am paying a videographer. I am, you know, paying for clothing, transportation, and I know brands have marketing budgets. So <laughs> it's like, why, why don't you want to pay the creator? So that, or, you know, sometimes you send us stuff and it's like, you know, can you get a, get a post and we'll think about um, you know, a partnership, but why, why, <laughs> like, why would you pay us if you're already getting it for free? I haven't seen a return as of yet, and I've had high engagement and have not seen a return. Um, I, I wish brands could be a little more transparent, um, also communicate. Um, I think 
I think, hmm. so I don't like when brands take advantage with um, certain verbiage. A lot of influencers, well, a lot of creators, when we started, we didn't know anything about financial literacy within the creator space. So we didn't know about exclusivity. We didn't know about licensing. We just knew we have a passion in travel or a passion in beauty and we want to create. And then it hurts to find out that we were being taken advantage of for our content. You know, whether that's, oh, we're, we're going to pay you $150 for a post when that same content could have been paid $2,000, but we just didn't know how to negotiate. Um, so like just really trying to be transparent because I see it as when we have a partnership, yes, it's business, but it's a family. I wanna make sure that your content is, is doing numbers. I'm creating content that's gonna help sell product. So when there's transparency and there's communication, we are going to go even harder. We're going to make sure that we create amazing content. It's great. Yeah, um, I, I would add on the pay transparency point. That's something I hear a lot, especially when you're a creator that's starting out and you don't really know what your value is or what these terms mean or what you're signing away. Um, it's been interesting to see startups try to come into this space. Um, you know, if you're in marketing or a journalist or whatever, you can go online and go on Glassdoor and kind of get a market rate for your role. And that's very different when you're a creator because even if you're a nano influencer or a mega influencer, you could, you could still charge maybe similar rates depending on your engagement. So I think it's very confusing. Um, so there's been a, a few startups that are kind of coming in to try to be that glass door for creators. Uh, one is very aptly called F You Pay Me, <laughs> and it was started by um, it started by a creator, and it it's very similar to Glassdoor, where you post kind of your experience with brands and how much they paid, and then creators can kind of have a gauge at least in in that one way. Um, another thing is just having a manager has helped, um, something that creators have told me because their manager has visibility into their other clients or have done a lot of these deals and campaigns so they can negotiate kind of better rates for you. So that's something that, that comes up a lot in my conversations, especially in the early stages of being a creator. It's really hard to know how much to charge. That's great. Um, all right, so we're coming down at the end of time here, but we have one last question. So, um, and I'm going to start with Tori, and then um, and then we'll sort of go on down the line. So, the last question is: What are the key trends or changes that you ha are are seeing or have seen in the in this sort of influencer or creator space um, yeah. since you've been in it? Um, so, we've definitely seen kind of a blurring of the lines between you know, our influencer and affiliate programs. I think we were doing so many more like kind of hybrid models where we're doing like a CPA plus a gift or CPA plus Jane credit or, you know, kind of just like being a little bit more flexible and figuring out what works with them. Um, and another thing that we're seeing is really creators launching mobile apps and owning the experience. Um, so those would probably be the top two. I have, I could sit here all day and talk about this, but I, if I had to pick two, I think one thing that's really interesting is just seeing creators really diversify their businesses. It's not just like I'm an Instagram influencer and I do brand sponsorships and that's my business. Creators are doing coaching, they have newsletters, they do online courses, they do a ton of different stuff. And I think one area that's really interesting is creators actually becoming investors and consultants to these companies. So they're angel investing, you know, startups are adding them to their cap tables and not just utilizing them for marketing, but really getting feedback on products. Because I think creators can do so much more than sell a product. They can give you really important and critical feedback on what you're doing internally, on strategies, on operations, lots of stuff beyond you know, kind of the traditional sponsored post. So that's one area where I think a lot of creators are going to be diversifying and investing is one of them. Um, and two, I just think collaborations is going to be a big thing. I mean, we've seen it work really well with TikTok collab houses, but not everyone can just go and move to LA and uproot their lives. We've seen it a little bit on the platform side of Instagram letting you co-author a post. but. I think there's just not a lot of great ways for creators to be able to connect and network. So I expect that to kind of become a, a bigger trend. I don't know what form that takes, if it's like a giant Discord server or if someone comes up with a brilliant idea. But um, I think anything that can facilitate collaborations between creators is, um, is definitely going to be happening more. Yeah. Um, trends that I'm noticing, newsletters. 
Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of creators, because of now there's a lot of hacking going on, and a lot of creators are starting to lose access to a lot of their social media. So they are focusing on newsletters, um, going back to blogging, mm -hmm. um, making sure that they own well, not, I don't want to say own, but they're making sure that their social, me social media family, they are their family. You know, big on community, um, doing a lot of meetups, hosting a lot of dinners, but authentic dinners. Um, I'm seeing a lot of creators doing a lot of trips, like authentic trips. I'm not talking about brand hosted trips that it's a bunch of people who, when you walk away, you're not going to talk to them anymore. People are now really, they want authentic, authentic relationships, I'm sorry. <laughs> authentic relationships. Um, I think when social media first started, a lot of creators were tapping into their ego and they were using their content to feed their ego. But now they're realizing there was no substance in that. So now creators are tapping into a family and they're learning, they're growing from their family. People are becoming more authentic. That's why TikTok is doing so well, because people no longer want to see this perfected life. We want to know, what are you doing with your mental health? Well, how do you get by every day? We want to see the ugly. So real authentic content, that's the trend. Well, I want to thank all of you here, um, this wonderful panel of ladies. Um, I think, I hope that you all learned something today. Um, you know, I, I definitely did. I mean, if, if we go from the beginning of the day, for those of you who are here, where Max, um, our chief product officer, talked a lot about how we're going to be integrating our influencer, all, influencer platform all the way into our current impact.com platform um, and really making it all one. So you'll be able to have influencers that and creators um, that can work with every brand. Um, and so I think you're gonna see sort of that trend moving forward. Um, and then if we go back to Tori's uh, beginning where she's, she came from the, comes from the affiliate space and how they've really integrated that in. So um, I really enjoyed speaking with all of you today. Again, hope everybody learned something and thanks for your time and attention. Thank you.